Hi, my name is Harrison Chase, co-founder and CEO of LangChain. Today, I want to talk to you about a new feature that we're launching called LangGraph Cloud. What exactly is LangGraph Cloud? First, let's talk about LangGraph. LangGraph is our framework specifically built for building agentic applications. Compared to other agent frameworks out there, it has three main benefits. First, it is extremely controllable. We've done this by making it very, very low level. So you build LangGraph agents as graphs, and so each node and edge is nothing more than a Python function. So anything you want can go in there. We don't do any abstractions over prompts. We don't require using LangChain, anything like that. Second, we've added in a persistence layer that enables a lot of really cool human in the loop features. So with this persistence layer, you can do a lot of cool things, like basic things like chat, but more advanced things like pausing a graph before a tool can get executed or even going back in time and editing it. And I'll show a little bit of that later on. And third, LangGraph is streaming first. This means not only do we stream LLM calls, but we also stream intermediate steps as they occur. So that's LangGraph, and I'd highly encourage you to check out the documentation here for tutorials, how-to guides, and conceptual guides on all things related to LangGraph and building agentic applications. But now let's talk about LangGraph Cloud. So LangGraph Cloud is the easiest way to deploy LangGraph agents. It also adds in a bunch of functionality that is important when going to production with agentic applications. If we go over to this Cloud tab here, we can get a little bit of an overview of what some of those features are. So first, LangGraph Cloud adds in this concept of assistance and threads. So similar to OpenAI's assistance API, you can now create different assistants, which are configurations of your graph. And then you can create different threads, which are individual conversations with those assistants. LangGraph Cloud also supports background runs. This is really good for long running asynchronous agentic jobs. We've also built in a concept of cron jobs because not all agents are triggered by a user input. Some of them need to be triggered on a schedule. Double texting is another new thing we've added. This is when you kick off an agent and then before it finishes, you send it another message. How should it handle that? We've added four different modes to support that. One of the last big things we've launched is LangGraph Studio. Studio is an integrated development experience where you can debug, share, and test out your LangGraph agents. Let's walk through a small example of using LangGraph Cloud. This is an example repository that we've set up to show how to deploy a LangGraph application on LangGraph Cloud. If we scroll down, we can see that there are only a few files. It's pretty easy. If we look at agent.py, this is where our agent lives, and this is exactly the same code that we would normally write for LangGraph. Nothing changes when you need to deploy it to LangGraph Cloud. So we can see that we've got our agent here, we have the state, we have the nodes, we construct the graph, and then we have this graph variable at the end. The next piece is this langgraph.json, and this tells LangGraph Cloud how to deploy the agent. So we have this dependency line. This just points to this overall folder. In this folder, you'll notice that we have requirements.txt with the minimal dependencies required to deploy this agent. When we specify these dependencies here, it'll automatically pick up requirements.txt and build them into the image that we deploy. Next, we have our graphs that we can deploy. You can deploy multiple graphs, but in this case, we're only deploying one. We're calling it agent, and we're saying that it lives in agent.py under the variable graph. And finally, we have a link to our environment variables. These are just used for local testing. All right, now let's see how to deploy this on LangGraph Cloud. I can go to LangSmith, and I can click on this Deployments button on the left-hand bar. Once I'm in here, I can click on New Deployment. I need to connect it to my GitHub, and after that, I can select the repository I want to use. I can then give this deployment a name. I then need to point it to the configuration file, the langroth.json configuration file, as well as a Git branch to build off of. I can choose a deployment type. I'm going to keep this simple and use development, but we also have production deployment types with more resources. And finally, I can add environment variables. These are secrets like API keys for LLMs or other tools. 
and you'll notice that a Langsmith project is created by default for all LangGraph deployments. LangGraph integrates seamlessly with Langsmith, providing best-in-class observability and testing. Once everything's okay, I can go over here and hit Submit. I've already created a deployment, so let's just jump to that and see what it looks like. This is my LangGraph example deployment. I can see there's a few things that I can do. First, I can go to the API docs. We have detailed API docs for all the different endpoints that LangGraph Cloud exposes, namely ones to do with assistance, threads, and runs. Assistants are configurations of graphs, and so I can create different configurations of these graphs. Threads are then individual, independent sessions. These can be used for things like conversations if you have multiple users chatting with your graph at the same time. And finally, runs are when you kick off a graph to run over a thread. This is designed this way to allow you to run multiple graphs on the same thread, should you choose. There are a few different types of runs, as we talked about before. Streaming, background, cron jobs. You can manage them all here. The most fun thing I want to show off, though, is LangGraph Studio. So this automatically gets built for all graphs deployed. I get a visualization of the graph and the different ways that data can flow through it here. I can interact with it. So let's send it a message and have it use a tool. What's the weather in NASA? We submit, and we see that it starts streaming the intermediate steps as they happen. So a tool call, then the result from the tool, and then the final response. We've equipped LangGraph Studio with all the time travel features that make it a fantastic debugging experience. What exactly does that mean? I can go back in time to a previous step, and I can edit what happened at that step. So let's change this to say weather in San Francisco currently. I can then fork from here. This will create a separate fork of the thread at this point in time, and then resume execution. So now it's calling the search tool with this new query. It's getting it back and it's continuing from there. I can also add breakpoints to my graph. So they don't actually call tools, but they pause before executing them. Here I can add a breakpoint to all nodes, and I can then send a follow-up message. What about in LA? Now as it starts to execute, before it executes any of these tools, it asks me, permission to continue. When I click continue, it goes on. We think with this combination of visualization, breakpoints, and time travel, LangGraph Studio is a really powerful new way for developing your LangGraph applications. We're really excited to see what people will build with LangGraph and LangGraph Cloud. Right now, LangGraph Cloud is in private beta, as we want to focus on giving the first few users a really powerful experience. You can sign up for the private beta by going to langchain.com, going to the LangGraph page, and then clicking Get on the waitlist here. You'll notice that we'll ask a bunch of detailed questions about your application so we can best design LangGraph Cloud for future users. Thank you for watching, and I'm excited to see what you build.